So the Orbiter trial was the first placebo-controlled trial of angioplasty in stable coronary artery disease. It um, was a very uh, new and kind of innovative trial at the time, but I guess shocked the interventional world in terms of its results. Um, we found, interestingly, that in a placebo-controlled trial, while angioplasty significantly improved ischemia on dobutamine stress echo on, and on invasive metrics of physiology, um, the effect of angioplasty on symptoms and on exercise time was not as great as we expected and essentially not statistically significant between the two groups of angioplasty and placebo. And of course that had a fallout and I hope now over the last year, 18 months, we've started to understand those results a bit more and understand what they mean for our patients. So I think the first thing I've learned is that a placebo-controlled trial of intervention is absolutely possible, that our patients will consent, that interventionists will recruit, and that these trials are absolutely doable. And of course, you know, we've, it's been four decades since the introduction of angioplasty, and many people had said that this trial maybe should have been done earlier. Um, it also allows us to build on this trial in terms of being able to develop more placebo-controlled trials for other interventions and also for angioplasty itself. I think probably in terms of take-home messages for stable coronary artery disease, the thing I've most learned is that symptoms in themselves are very complex and multifactorial and that the relationship between symptoms and ischemia relief is perhaps not quite as simplistic as we'd made it. Um, you know, we might expect that we see this very tight stenosis that we can fix with a stent and our patients will definitely feel better in terms of symptoms. But what we saw from Orbiter is that that expectation is perhaps a little bit naive and that there's more going on with these patients. So I hope that its legacy is for us to understand the importance of placebo-controlled trials, but also to understand more about stable coronary artery disease. I've certainly learned that in a setting of single coronary artery disease vessels, albeit many of them were very tight stenoses, that the improvement of, in terms of symptoms from angioplasty is more modest than we'd expected. Um, however, interestingly, we know that the blood supply to the heart is certainly improved by angioplasty. I think that from Orbiter we can build to hopefully produce more trials and we're now running the Orbiter 2 trial, but also think about developing placebo control trials in all the interventions that potentially have a subjective or a you know, symptomatic or quality of life uh, improvement as opposed to hard endpoint outcomes in terms of mortality or myocardial infarction. So we've already started recruitment for the next trial, which is Orbiter 2. Having built on the Orbiter 1 data set with obviously single vessel coronary disease patients, uh, we've now built a trial that is much bigger. It's 400 patients uh, who have multi-vessel disease, although excluding left main stem or CTOs. Um, and these patients will have symptoms of coronary artery disease and angina, much like the orbiter patients, but will have a symptom assessment phase. And during that symptom assessment phase, if they are asymptomatic, they will uh, be excluded from the trial. Um, most importantly, these patients are on real-world anti-anginal therapy, um, unlike orbiter where they had a very intensive medical optimization phase and were on up to th an average of three anti-anginals. So uh, my hunch is that you know, the efficacy of angioplasty will be greater if the effect of, of um, symptom relief hasn't already been uh, maximised by anti-anginal therapy and you can imagine that adding anything in second or third line the effect is attenuated. So of course if we add in angioplasty at a much earlier stage on patients who essentially have no anti-anginal therapy or minimal anti-anginal therapy we might expect greater benefits. Hopefully we'll have a kind of partnership of two trials, one that allows us to know the benefit of angioplasty in a maximally treated subset um, and then another which is perhaps more real world, you know, the option to give our patients the effect size of angioplasty when they, if they don't want to take anti-anginal therapy. We're already recruiting, uh, I mean I anticipate that we'll hopefully be reporting these results in about three years time uh, and we'll be back with the results and see what they show.